Good morning, and welcome to the Underwood Baptist Church Morning Devotion for Wednesday, September 22nd. Happy Fall to everyone. 159 years ago, on September 22nd, 1862, Abraham Lincoln announced the Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation after the Union Army's victory at the Battle of Antietam. The proclamation declared that in 100 days, all enslaved people in states currently rebelling against the Union shall then, thenceforth, and forever be free. Now, even though President Lincoln released the proclamation, no one was actually freed on September 22nd, or even 100 days later on January 1st. In fact, it would be almost three years later, after the end of the Civil War, that the last slaves in the Confederate States were formally declared free. And even then, the proclamation only applied to slaves in the Confederacy, not the entire country. And slavery, slavery would not be completely outlawed until the passage of the 13th Amendment later in 1865. But the Emancipation Proclamation created an avenue for freedom for those under slavery. This made me think of Romans chapter 8, where we read in verses 1 through 4, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. When Christ sacrificed himself on the cross, he made an avenue to free us from sin. Verse 3 tells us this was something we could never do. We could never have hoped to do it on our own through the law. It could only be accomplished through the sacrifice of God's own Son. Fortunately, unlike the Emancipation Proclamation that only applied to certain areas, Christ's sacrifice open freedom from sin to everyone, everywhere, with no delay. However, some things still have to happen for that emancipation from sin to actually take effect in a person's life. The first thing is, they have to hear about it. Just like someone had to take the message of the Emancip Proclam Emancipation Proclamation forward so that people would know about it and be able to react to it, someone has to take the message of the gospel to sinners who don't know about it yet. Two chapters later, in Romans 10, verses 13 through 14, Paul writes, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how they, shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Someone must go and share the gospel with the unsaved, so that they have the opportunity to hear, believe, and call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. If you're a Christian, that falls to you. That's our job. That's our purpose for being here on this earth after salvation. To glorify God and spread the gospel to sinners so that they can believe and be saved. Now, God didn't promise it would be easy. And there will be certain obstacles that get placed in your way to keep you from sharing the gospel with someone at some point. Maybe everyone at some point. But we must rem remember the internal, the eternal importance of the gospel message, the, the consequences of it, the need for it, and let that motivate us to overcome those barriers and continue to share the gospel. Now, secondly, the people who heard had to realize it applied to them, and they had to accept it that it was sufficient to free them. You can't get free from something until you realize you're enslaved by it, and someone can't be saved until they realize and admit that they're a sinner and then believe that Christ's sacrifice can save them. Now lastly, those people who hear it have to act on it. I don't know what every enslaved person's reaction was to learning of the Emancipation Proclamation. Maybe everybody accepted it. Everyone that heard about it, and, and then they acted on it. And they took the path to freedom, battling and overcoming the obstacles and people that were in their way that tried to stop them from, from being free. I don't know what happened there. But I do know that there are people who die and go to hell every day that have heard the gospel. And maybe they even realize that they're a sinner. 
And if they don't realize they're a sinner, they can't even get that far. But maybe they realize they're a sinner, but then they choose to stay enslaved to sin. Maybe they think they've done too much evil. Maybe they think they're too bad and it, it wouldn't work for them. Maybe, maybe they're scared of what happens after they get saved or what happens with the change. Maybe they let someone else stop them. Maybe they just like their sin too much. They don't want to get out of it. They, they know that and they, they don't want to have anything else. I don't know. But if you're listening to this today and you're not saved, even though it's brief, I know you've at least heard the broad strokes of the gospel this morning, Ali, that you know what, what that message is. And I want you to know that the message applies to you. No matter who you are, no matter what, all have sinned. And that there's nothing that may be, anything that may be keeping you from acting, from acting on it, nothing is worth what you will, you will lose by not acting on that message right now. Nothing that you can experience in this world is worth the loss of heaven and, in a sense, the gain of hell. Now, those of you who are listening this morning and are saved, I hope you take some time this morning to reflect on what Christ has done for you, what he sacrificed for us, and what it means, what we've come out of. And then take some time to make sure you're fulfilling your purpose here on earth by spreading the gospel to a lost and dying world and making sure you're overcoming the things that may keep you from doing that and getting that message out to everyone who needs to be free from this, their slavery to sin. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the day that you've given us today. We thank you for, for bringing us through everything that you've done. We thank you for the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, Father. We, we, we thank you that that does free us from sin. And we ask you to anybody who's listening to this day is not saved, that, that they would realize that and they would act on it and they would accept you as their, as their Savior. And we ask everybody who's listening to this that is saved, that they would remember that it's our job to share the gospel and look for those ways and make sure that we're getting that message out so that everyone can hear and everyone can have a chance to believe and call upon your name. Well, thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your time and attention this morning. I hope you have a great day. Be sure to come back tomorrow for Brother Evan's devotion, and I'll be back next week. Goodbye.